beyond IQ, three more quotients with a biblical perspective on all four. According to psychologists, there are four types of quotients, not just IQ or intelligence quotient. And here they are. Intelligence quotient, IQ, emotional quotient, EQ, social quotient, SQ, and adversity quotient, AQ. Intelligence quotient, which we've heard of the most, much of our lives. This is the measure of a person's level of comprehension. We need IQ to solve maths, language, uh, and linguistic abilities, uh, memorize things, recall lessons. Proverbs 4 verses 5 through 7 say, Get wisdom. Get understanding, forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Verse 6, Do not forsake her, personifying wisdom or understanding. She will preserve you. Love her. She will keep you. Verse 7, Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom and with all you're getting, get understanding. So that's Proverbs 4, 5 through 7. Another term we use for wisdom, understanding, uh, acumen, intelligence is gray matter. Gray matter is a term we use for smarts, uh, intelligence, and we need to honestly acknowledge that some folk are endowed with a little more than others. That's just a fact of life. Certainly in certain areas. Personally for me, calculus is not my strength. But English and literature is not my weakness. Let us not be jealous of those who are gifted and talented in certain fields but rather encourage and be supportive of them. So that's IQ. Second is EQ, emotional quotient. This is the measure of our ability to maintain peace with others. Keep time, be responsible, honest, respect boundaries, be humble, gracious, genuine, considerate. Isaiah 26 verse 3 says, You will keep him in peace whose thoughts are fixed on you because he trusts, he or she trusts in you. Now to be at peace with others, I first need to be at peace within myself, in my own heart, mind and soul. Psalm 46 verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. And the reason the child of God ought to have a high EQ or emotional quotient is once because once we come to know Christ as personal Savior, He is the Prince of Peace and He comes to dwell in our hearts and lives. Listen to this statement. Know God, K-N-O. O W, no God, you will know peace. But no God, N O, no God, there will be no peace in your life. The third of the four is S Q or social quotient. This is the measure of a person's ability to build a network of friends and maintain it over a long period of time. Now we're not talking about five thousand friends on Facebook, whom most of them we haven't even met. We just connect because of similar likes or whatever. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about friends, uh, relatives, associates, acquaintances, people we have interacted with one way or the other and have some tangible connection with. Social quotient. Not only building a network of friends, but maintaining that network over a long period of time. SQ, social quotient. Proverbs 18.24 says, A man who has friends must himself be friendly, but there is a friend 
who sticks closer than a brother. So if you say, I hardly have any friends, we need to introspect and say, am I a friendly person to begin with? If I'm just uh, seclusive, uh, all by myself, a loner, then we can't expect to have a lot of friends. To have friends, we must be one. Yes, we do understand about introverts and you can handle only so much company, but it does hold true that a healthy social life is conducive to overall mental and emotional well-being. Friends also provide an excellent support structure when we are down or when we are going through difficult times, as is borne out so well by this beautiful scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 10. For if he fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him, or oh, it's very sad, if you are alone when you fall, because you have no one to pick you up. Ecclesiastes 4.10 It's very interesting to note, listen to this point, that people who have a higher EQ and SQ, emotional quotient and social quotient, that those folk tend to go further in life than those with just a high IQ or intelligent quotient. But some of those with high IQ may have a lower EQ and SQ. Most schools and educational institutions capitalize on improving IQ levels, while EQ and SQ are downplayed. Now listen to this. A person of high IQ can end up being employed or hired by a person with a high EQ and SQ, even though that person may have an average IQ. Isn't that amazing? So, your EQ, emotional quotient, represents your character, while your SQ, social quotient, represents your charisma. I like that. Your EQ, emotional quotient, represents your character, whereas your SQ, or social quotient, represents your charisma, personality. So, give in to habits that will improve these three cues, especially your EQ and SQ, while continuing to focus on getting wisdom and understanding, which is IQ. Now, there's a fourth quotient that has been recognized, and not many have heard of it. It's AQ or adversity quotient. Adversity quotient is the measure of our ability to go through a rough patch in life and come out of it without losing it, or dare I say, without losing our mind or our cool. This adversity is what builds backbone into people and prevents them from becoming what we call sissies or namby pambies. Now, this has nothing to do with uh, uh, being male or female. I'm talking about toughening us up to handle adversity. In uh, Shakespeare's As You Like It, there's a quote that goes as such. Sweet are the uses of adversity, which like the toad, ugly and venomous, bears yet a jewel in its brow. So it's by coming through trials, tests, temptations, tribulation, challenges that we are toughened. It bears yet a jewel in its brow. We can come out the better, the more mature for it. So when faced with troubles and challenges, AQ, adversity quotient, determines who will give up or who will abandon their job, who will quit or, or who'll stop on a certain project they've begun working on, or even some would quit on their family. Sadly, some, the challenges might, the stress might be so much, in a few cases, they even consider taking their own lives or suicide. You know, there was a case in 1 Samuel chapter 30, verse 6, we read when David came back with his men, and some other 
uh, enemy had come and raided their village, burned it to the ground and taken their women and children hostage. His own men wanted to stone him. We read in 1 Samuel 36, David was so down. It says, now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the hearts of all the people were grieved, every one for their sons and daughters. But David encouraged or strengthened himself in the Lord his God. This is the difference between a psychologist talking about the four cues and when we look at it from a biblical, godly perspective. David encouraged and strengthened, drew strength in himself from the Lord his God. We have the Lord Jesus who lives within us, who said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. No matter how difficult, how challenging your circumstance, test, trial, even if it's a fiery trial, we have Christ within us. Hallelujah. So instead of looking for a way out or for an escape hatch, if you can't get through a challenge, rest assured that the Father will either make a way over or around it. God will make a way even when there seems to be no way. The key is to not be a quitter. Listen to this. Quitters never win and winners never quit. Parents, dad and mom, please expose your children to areas of life other than academics. In addition to academics, our children should learn and be taught to enjoy physical work, manual labor. But do your best, however, not to use it as a form of punishment. For example, gardening and cooking are great places to begin. And don't separate these between boys and girls. Either way, our children should be exposed to things like this, taking them out camping, Encourage them to participate in sports and games, in the arts, drama, music, journalism, poetry, oratory, etc. Every one of these is conducive, significant, relevant, and important to growing a well-rounded child. Yes, we do want them to develop their IQs, to read and to study and to learn and become more knowledgeable. But we also want them to have a well-developed EQ, SQ and AQ, emotional quotient, social quotient and adversity quotient. They should become well-rounded, multifaceted human beings able to do things independently of their parents. Finally, hear this parents, what a powerful thought here. Do not prepare the road for your children. In other words, don't mollycoddle them and hover over them constantly. Do not prepare the road for your children. Prepare your children for the road. There will be potholes. There will be speed humps. No matter where we may be in our life or in the world. Do not prepare the road for your children. Prepare your children for the road. And the purpose for all of this is so that they and you and I adults will glorify God, our creator, with the gifts and talents he's given to each one of us, regardless of our age. If you've been blessed, stretched and challenged, will you subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, like, share and comment below. Thank you. God bless.